Welcome to Picture Healer Channel. This is Shi Tian. Today we are going to look at the basic rules for good feng shui. If you are pretty new to feng shui or feeling overwhelmed by all different feng shui rules, you can just follow this video. It's like a checklist of the most important feng shui rules. If you are looking for a new house or apartment, this can be a good guideline to find your ideal feng shui house. There are many different schools of feng shui, but we all agree that exterior landscape is very important because the landscape form creates a stronger power. It is harder to change if you start with a wrong location. The basic landscape includes a mountain and water. The mountain can mean anything that's taller, including buildings. And the water can be anything that's lower and moving, such as traffic, street, road, or highway. And you look at the location of the mountain and water in relation to your house, then you can see if it's beneficial to your house or it creates sha qi that you should try to avoid. So this is a bigger area. You might want to look at a map of the whole city or the whole region and see if there's anything that's significant. The second way is to check at the qi or the energy around your house. So it might be not very obvious, but one way is to look at the plants around that area. Are they very green and healthy or do they look diseased or not very healthy? And look at the whole neighborhood. Is every house well maintained? You can look at their front yard. Do you see a clean and beautiful environment? This can be subjective, but if most houses are clean and beautiful from the outside, you have better chance of good feng shui for your house. The third one is to look at the outline of the house or apartment. In feng shui, it's better to be a square or rectangle without any missing corners. So if it's very strange shape with missing areas, it can create feng shui problems. Another rule for a good feng shui house is to have support in the back. So the back should be higher. So behind the building, there should be some higher structure either other buildings or a mountain. For the front, it's better to be open and lower, like water. And a nice open view is a symbol of good future. And the left and right side should be in the right proportion to support you, but not too tall or too low. You don't want to be the tallest building of the whole area or the lowest. It's better to be in the middle and not extreme. The fifth point is about the light and dark. The house should not be in the shadow most of the time. If it's too dark in the house, it has too much in energy and it's not a good feng shui. Sometimes you open the window and you see a wall from your next door neighbor and that can be a problem too because the qi cannot flow freely. And the next one is about the sha qi, or the negative energy. This can be a big category. We'll look at some common ones. For example, you don't want your house to face a cemetery. Even a temple or church is not ideal because it has more yin energy. Another famous one is the T-junction. If there's a long straight rope point to your door, then it can create negative energy. Or if you are very close to a crossing road, it's also not ideal. The road can be like a scissor shape and that creates sharp energy and can cause health issues. And other common negative sha qi include the corner of a building from your neighbor that's pointing at your door or window. That's also like an arrow pointing at you and that will affect your health. 
And if you are living in a big city, sometimes a lot of buildings have a lot of glass windows. The windows can reflect a lot of light, and that might create a light sha qi. So we try to avoid that too. Another one is the electricity pole or the light pole, or even cell phone tower. If you can see them directly in front of your house or outside your window, they can affect your health too. And one of the famous feng shui sha qi is called the fan gong shui, and it's not good to have the house near the tip of the curve. Now we'll look at the interiors. We'll start with the entrance and lobby area. First, we'll look at the view from the main entrance door. Is it beautiful and open view, or is there any problem structures? Maybe the main door is facing the corner of a building, or facing a cell phone tower, or some tall chimneys. And look at the traffic and the road in front. Is it a lot of traffic? How wide is the road? The road is like water in feng shui, and it can be symbol of wealth. We want the road to flow in front of you gently, maybe with a little curve, but we don't want any extreme curve or very heavy traffic. If there's any actual water, make sure the water is not flowing away from the house. That can mean money flow away from you. The entrance area should be in your lucky feng shui directions. The main entrance is your major area for good qi to enter, so we want this to be in a lucky direction, no matter which school of feng shui you follow. If you are standing around the entrance area and can see through to the back door or the back windows, that's called the chuan tang sha. That means the qi can flow out too quickly, and the good energy cannot stay. That can also mean difficult to keep money in your house. This can be fixed by adding some furniture or wall to block the views, so you don't see right through the whole house from the entrance. And don't place the mirror directly facing the main entrance. A mirror is fine in the entrance lobby area, but the mirror directly facing the door is not a good feng shui. If you move it to the side, it is okay. And we also don't want the main entrance door directly facing a restroom or directly facing a stairs. If it's downward stair, it's even worse because the qi will go downward. So that's the basic feng shui rules for exterior and the entrance door area. We'll look at interior feng shui rules in a separate video soon. Thank you for watching, and talk to you next week.